Hi, and welcome to Teacher Tea Time with Sarah. Tonight I am enjoying some chamomile because it is late, a lot later than I thought I would film. Um, tonight is a special night because my two-year-old and my six-month-old are both sleeping in their own bedroom, so this is a special occasion. In light of the brand new school year, I want to talk about three major things, all dealing with classroom management and consistency. Because if you talk to anyone, they say, oh, how do you manage your classroom? They'll say, be consistent every time, be consistent. Um, so here are three things that I am consistent with starting on day one. Um, number one, your classroom expectations. Hopefully you're in a school that has expectations for the entire school, um, every single class. Right now I'm in a school that has a positive behavior intervention system in place. So we all have the same rules and it's really nice because the students get the same thing from class to class. Not only consistency with me, but consistency with all of their teachers. Our expectations are to be responsible, respectful, and safe. And any problem that you have in a classroom can be in those three things. Um, if they're being rude to another student, or if just the way that their demeanor is, sometimes you end up in a power struggle and truly you can sit down with them and say, are you being respectful? Because what I see is not respectful and you can talk about what respect is and what it means that way. And not just respectful to other students, but obviously respectful to the teacher and respectful to themselves. You can really use respect for almost everything. And whatever your school has in place, lean on them. I taught at an elementary school and the one I leaned on the most there was follow directions. With those expectations, you're going to use those for behavior problems and for positive things. If you have somebody who's respectful all the time, celebrate them, find a way to celebrate them. Or somebody who's really figuring out how to be responsible, whatever it is, whether they're growing or just consistently wonderful, find a way to celebrate your students, even if it's just a high five. The second thing I want to talk about is good things. It's one of my favorite things that I do in my classroom and I do it every single day. It's very quick after you practice it and it's three children saying something good. It can be random, you can draw it from a hat, however you want to choose your students and have them say something positive and get the parts of their brains activated with positive energy versus sometimes negative things, especially in middle school, happen in the hallway or another class and this gets them focused on something positive and I truly believe in a positive place it's a lot easier to learn. I know that uh, if I'm in a really negative place or negative thoughts I'm not going to absorb anything about math or language arts or in my case chorus or theater arts, I'm not going to want to read, I'm not going to want to take it in. And spending those few minutes every day just saying something good pays off so much. And that is how I've gotten to know my students better than any other tactic. Um, I really know what's going on in their lives because they share the good things that are going on. And sometimes it's as simple as, I had fried chicken last night, to something as big as my mom went to college and got a degree and we're really excited and get to go to graduation this weekend. Number three, the biggest thing is model the behavior that you expect. So if I expect them to be respectful, I, I expect myself to be respectful. Thank you so much for joining me for teacher tea time. I enjoyed having my chamomile with you. Next time, I look forward to having a teacher with me to interview to get some more ideas for this school year. Thank you and happy teaching.